you go to plug in the old Christmas lights, nothing's happening. So you can go just buy another set of lights, they're only a couple of dollars, and throw those out to avoid the hassle of trying to find the burned out one. But depending how often you have broken lights, it may be better to just try and find the bad one after all. If you have a couple of spare sets, you can just use them for donor bulbs, and whenever something breaks, you just replace the bulb from what you've already got. I normally use one of these non-contact voltage testers, but I also just bought this Lightkeeper Pro on Amazon. I'll put links to these below. So I'm going to try this as well. These voltage testers can be bought for a few dollars, or they can get expensive, 20 or 30 dollars. The way they work, when they come near live AC voltage, they start beeping and lighting up. The way these miniature Christmas lights are set up, you have the plug for the AC, and it goes straight through hot and neutral over to a receptacle, so that's always going to have a connection. And tapping into the hot and neutral, there could be one string of 50 lights in series, and possibly another set of 50 and even more. So if one light completely burns out in one of these strings, all the lights in this string will go out, and the others may stay lit because those are independent circuits off of the main AC feed. Here's what the light looks like inside. We have the two electrodes and a filament at the top, when the bulb burns out, there's a shunt down at the bottom which will take over and complete the circuit. So if this light here blows and the shunt does take over, it's the same as this light being gone, but there's just a wire going straight through. So we only have 49 lights, and they can all stay lit except for the burned out one. But if the shunt fails to take over, this bulb creates a complete break in the path, and that's when all the lights go out. Sometimes we can fix this, like with a Lightkeeper Pro, and other times there's just nothing we can do and we just have to find the dead bulb and replace it. This will beep and flash when it is near a hot live wire. We'll make sure we plug this in so that the hot wire is starting here, and so we can detect live electricity up until the fault, and then we stop detecting anything. So we need to make sure we have the lights plugged in, so that it's the hot wire that's going light to light. So that way we can trace the live voltage and see where it disappears. And since this can be plugged in either way, we can take a look at the first light. We separate this out from everything else because this is very sensitive, but our hand can act as a shield. So if we separate this bulb out, and now our hand is shielding it from all the live connections below, we don't have a live connection on this bulb socket. So that's the neutral wire. All we have to do is plug this in the other way around. And now test that again. So what we want to do, we have this entire strand of lights. Now to make this easier to find the bulb that's a problem, we can start halfway down the string and see if we still have a live a connection. So I come down here, isolate this out, and there's nothing. So that means I can forget about this part of the string for now. Somewhere from the plug to this point is the problem. So I'll go about halfway again, see if this section is live, and it is. So now I'm getting electricity up to this point, and it's being lost by the time it gets here. So again, I'll go halfway. Okay, it's dead here. We're narrowing it down. Let's try this one. Nothing's here. Try this one. Nothing. And there's nothing here. So power is getting up to this light and not making it to this one. So this must be the bad bulb. So I'll take this out replace it with one that I know to be good, and we're back in business. So that was the bad one, and now the whole string works again. Now I'll try the Lightkeeper Pro. I read the instructions for this, and it says to have the lights plugged in, and if there's multiple sections, then the section that's not lit, pull out a bulb, and then plug that socket into the socket on the unit. Then pull the trigger and see if we can get this to start. 
it got it. It took five trigger pulls. The light bulb that's not lit is here. It was a red one and I knew it was broken and I put it in this string of white ones. So now the shunt in there is restored even though the light is burned out still. So we should replace any burned out lights because it will extend the life of the rest of the set. Of course I have to take this out of the unit and plug the other light in. So now the whole set is working again. It was able to fix the broken shunt in this one. And it doesn't always work. Some bulbs, I guess, are not recoverable. So here's another one that's broken and it causes the lights to stay off because there's no shunt connecting inside. So I'll plug it in here again, pull the trigger and the instructions say to do it up to 30 times. This one I can't recover. So this one's just useless. But I'll put back in the one that I did recover. The bulb is still blown, but the shunt at least works. So this unit was able to get the string working and help me identify the broken bulb and replace anything broken and get up and running. So this unit may be a little expensive, but again, if you go through this problem often enough, the time that this is most useful is if you have a whole bunch of lights already on a tree or wrapped around an extensive garland or something and you can't really go and undo it just to go tracing out the bulb, you can use this to at least repair the shunt, get the lights up and running, and then as soon as you're able you can track down the bulb that's burned out and replace it. So there's a couple of ways to get your lights up and running if you don't want to have to go out and buy a new set. If you already have a non-contact voltage tester or don't mind spending a few dollars or even more money for something like this, you can choose the method that works best for you. If you found this helpful and you think somebody else might be able to use this info, go ahead and share the video. Give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.